I really fell in love with sewing by hand, but there's still one thing I don't like about it. It takes so much time, it's so slow, and I'm already somebody who is working really slow, who's taking a lot of time. And sometimes I really just miss the speed of my modern sewing machine. But on the other hand, I love to do the things authentically, how they would have been done. But sometimes things just come together. And I got a phone call and asked my friends if I want to have an old sewing machine. Of course I did. So immediately I made some space. And here is this old lady. And as you can see, time took its toll. The wood is stained, the metal has a little bit of rust and lost all the paint, the gold paint. But on the other hand, most of the parts are still there. There's that little oil tin, which is still there. And also the sewing machine itself works. Or at least she worked 20 years ago. That was the last time she was in use and since then it just stood in the garage. The hope of my friends was that I would use it and I will definitely. And I'm so excited to try and work with it. And as you can see it works, but really hardly. I figured that this would be a step I would do later, but first I wanted to take care of the wood so that it will stay in a good shape for a couple more years. So I asked for help if somebody knows how to deal with all those water stains and scratches on the wood and I got some information by my uncle how to treat the wood, so I sent it down with this uh, with the steel padding, I removed the dirt and the upper layer of the varnish. And once all those layers of dirt were removed, and I did it a lot of times, many, many, many times, I was able to apply some um, furnishing oil wax to protect the wood and to make it shine again. And as you can see here, it really gets shiny again. And it isn't covered. You can really still feel the wood and it's so amazing. It feels so cool now. I really love touching just the table. That's kind of strange, I think, but still. <laughs> and because this oil can be inflammated just in the air, I put it in the bottle so it won't fetch fire. And once the first um, layer had soaked in, I distributed the rest so that it really got this even shine. And look how it already changed. It looks so amazing. It was definitely worth the time, even when I sometimes didn't believe that it would be that good. And of course I did the same for the covering of the machine. And yes, I don't recommend doing it in a space where you normally live, there's so much dust everywhere. <laughs> Not just on my glasses, but really everywhere. <laughs> Here 
here I'm removing a little bit of the dust before I also applied this wax oil. And here again you can see how big this changes. It's so cool! I just find it so cool. Of course this whole thing doesn't repair the wood but it protects it for coming time because there's already some wood fallen off and all those points I won't be able to repair but I thought it was worth it to protect the rest. At the cover I didn't work that well. There are some points where are still the old layers so I redid the whole thing and <laughs> just went all over it and made it again so that this time it was really done for good. And now I went on and had a look on to the mechanism of the machine. I knew that she didn't work smoothly and since I hadn't seen the machine from the knees and knew how this mechanism works, I just had a look and tried to clean it, because also there it was somewhat dirty. I'm using some ballistol to make the joints moving smoothly again. Usually you use this for cleaning everything mechanical, for example also a weapons, but it works very well for old sewing machines too. I took a lot of dirt out of it, mostly old yarns and dust and oil, a lot of old oil. Once I had cleaned the mechanism beneath the machine, I figured out how to thread the machine and then I made my first sewing experience. But unfortunately it didn't work out. The upper thread snapped and beneath all the thread made a big big knot and the textile was sucked in so that I had to cut it loose again and well, I had to figure out what was the problem. And fortunately I found it. The oh. problem was only that the thread just went under this little metal tongue. Now it's just jumping over and the trick was to fasten the screw a little bit. Now it sews. This lady is working again. My test, this was before I fastened that screw and those are now afterwards. And now she's sewing again. But you can hear there's something banging in the background. She's not working smoothly. And it came from the pedal. There was something with the pedal which made this noise. So I decided to have a look and to hopefully remove the sound. So I started cleaning. I removed one of the screws, but it wasn't actually responsible for the noise. But I thought when I'm there, I just clean it. And that was the trick. I just cleaned everything. I took out a lot of dirt. Really, a lot of dirt. 
and somehow it is running smoothly now. And actually I don't know really why. Maybe it's also the ballast hole. I don't know. And since I was already in cleaning mode, I also cleaned some parts of the upper machine. There's a hole you can look into the machine and I took more dust out there. Dust and oil, that's a bad combination. <laughs> and went on, I also cleaned the little bobbin since it was really, really rusty. Now it's shiny again. Still old, but shiny. And also the oil tin, I cleaned it so that it wasn't that sticky and oily anymore. So if I get in touch with it with one of my skirts or so, I won't have any oil touches. I don't know if I will use it, but it's cool that it's there, so I want it to be clean. Well, something I was almost expecting was that this drive belt wouldn't last any longer. And I was completely right, it broke. So I had to remove it and replace it. So I measured how long it is and how thick so that I could buy the right one. And voila, the new one. I hope this will work out. But they have the same thickness and you can I, I really feel like, <laughs> you can see it here, I can bend this like this and this one like... <laughs> so yeah, I will put it in now. So again I measured how long it should be, marked this, but I wasn't sure if this is really the correct length. So I put it in and checked again if the length is okay. And it wasn't, so I marked it again and I cut it. The next step was to make two holes so that I could put in this clip. So I used an awl. Um, usually I use it for making eyelets in my textiles but it was also handy here but I definitely recommend to watch out for your fingers and then I wrestled this clip in I don't know the one side was really tedious it took uh, ages to get it to the right place the other one luckily once it was in the machine was way easier And lastly, I pinched the clip in so that it was tightly and wouldn't stop the sewing. Let's have a look on how to define how old this machine is. Because it isn't that simple for this machine as it is for a Singer machine. Because the Singer machines, they have those codes where you can look it up and know when it was produced. And I have a Dürkopf, so it's a German machine, and all the records were lost, or most of them, because the records you can find today are really, there's missing a lot. But there are some machines who you, or some things you can date the machine on. There are some um, stickers in the covering and underneath the table, where it is marked when it was last polished. Unfortunately, in this case, they are completely broken. You can't read it anymore. And there is written in the covering a date. It's the 19th of May, 1909, possibly. Maybe it's a completely different number. We don't know. 
But another hint is the plate on the machine. This plate was used from 1878 to 1919. So this is a hint in which time it was possibly produced. And the last thing, this machine also has a serial number. And well, that's the problem here, that the records are lost. But there are some machines which were dated. And to be honest, it's only three machines. But based on those numbers, I can tell that this machine was probably made in 1880s. So this machine is possibly 140 years old. At least 100 years. Maybe more. We don't know. But I think it's really cool that a machine like this survived so long and that she works now again. I still have to learn how to run the machine smoothly, but the mechanic in itself is now working again and I'm really, really looking forward to make my first project with it. But until then, I hope you have a great time and I see you with my next project. Bye!